Jane. Jane. Yes, sir, Emma, what is it? I can't understand why I was five pounds overweight when I stood in the scales. Well, I told you why. You had that heavy purse in your hand. Well, not the second time, Jane. I hung it over my shoulder. <laughs> Well, that's what you can expect when you listen to my friend Irma. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend presents. Our friend Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Well, here it is, 12 o'clock Saturday. The noon whistles have just blown, and me, little Jane Stacy, I'm going to do the same. Because as far as the Rhinelander Investment Company is concerned, they can take their job until Monday morning. <laughs> so I covered my typewriter, opened my purse, examined my shopping list, looked at my paycheck, tore up my shopping list, <laughs> kicked my typewriter, slammed the door, and I'm off. Which reminds me, Irma Peterson is waiting for me on 42nd Street. <laughs> Boy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself smoking a cigar in broad daylight. Uh, hello, lady. I'm old enough to be your father. Don't you dare sit there and talk to me that way. Uh, look, lady, I ain't sitting. I happen to be a singer midget, and I'm tall for my age. Just a minute, sonny. Now, listen, lady, stop annoying me, or I'll climb up over this curb and let you have it. God, <laughs> dings are always trying to pick me up. <laughs> Jane. Oh, you've been waiting long, honey? Not by my watch. It stopped. <laughs> oh, Jane, I had a terrible experience with a little boy smoking a black cigar. I'm sure he wasn't any more than two feet old. Oh. <laughs> Irma, why is it that these things only happen to you? No one else. Come on, honey, let's go shopping, huh? Jane. Jane. What's the matter, honey? Jane, I feel two eyes in my back. Irma, we've just passed an optometrist sign. <laughs> Don't cause a scene, please. Oh, but Jane, I, I think we're being followed. Look back, I'm scared. Oh, Irma, you're just being silly, but I'll... Uh, I'll... Mm, Irma, someone is following us. Well, Jane, what'll we do? Oh, well, let's turn up this side street, see if he follows. Come on. Look back. Look back, Irma. No, Jane, you look back. All right. Irma, he's still following us. Now I'm getting worried. Well, uh, uh, don't be scared, Jane. Uh, you know the saying, two's company, three's a crowd. So as long as we're in a crowd, nothing can happen. <laughs> Come on, please, honey, let's run. Maybe we can shake him. Not me, Jane. I wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. <laughs> Irma? Irma? I have a feeling he's catching up with us. Hurry up, honey. Come on, hurry. Irma, what are you doing with that handkerchief? I'm going to drop it. Why? Well, if he's a masher, you'll think I'm flirting with him, and when he bends over to pick it up, you hit him, and I'll kick him, and then we'll both run. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, honey. Maybe it'll work. Drop the handkerchief. All right, there. Uh, pardon me, did you ladies drop this handkerchief? Yes. Well, here it is. Oh, Jane, it didn't work. He picked it up with his cane. I've been following you young ladies for several blocks. That's evident. Oh, I apologize. You see, I'm a photographer and... Oh, sure, yeah, I know. You're a photographer and you thought we were so beautiful that you want to take pictures of us, send us to Hollywood, and give us a contract to play opposite Gabby Hayes. <laughs> oh, no, no, you got me all wrong. I know this is a very unprofessional approach and I don't blame you for being suspicious. So, uh, here's my name and my card. Uh, Jack Varell, chief photographer, Manhattan Magazine. I know you've heard of our magazine. Yes. Well, you see, I've been assigned to do a series of pictures of typical young working girls, so I'd like to take some pictures of you. Oh, 
Oh, Jane, isn't it wonderful? You'll be on the cover of a magazine. Imagine my best girlfriend for only 15 cents. <laughs> 20 in Canada. Now, there's no sense in discussing it further at this time. Uh, you check on the legitimacy of my offer, and if you're interested, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a ring later today. Goodbye. Bye. Gee, Irma, do you think he's a phony? Well, I, I don't know, Jane, but let's go home and ask Al if he's a phony. Al will know. <laughs> No question about it. If he's a phony, he'll turn out to be Al's best friend. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little ballet dancers. One on her toes, the other still spinning. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up from a dying swan. <laughs> oh, Professor, Jane has a chance to be a photographer's model. Shouldn't she take it? Why not? Name me two prettier girls in all of New York than my two little sweethearts. Oh, Professor, that's sweet of you. Well, I know beauty when I see it. Oh. Don't misjudge me just because I go around with Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> You know, many a man who likes steak has to be satisfied with hash. <laughs> oh, Professor, I, I don't think you should describe Mrs. O'Reilly that way. You're right, Irma. She's not hash. She's more on the order of pig's knuckles. <laughs> but, but I like her. She's got a good heart. When I'm sick, she makes me a little soup, and, and that saves my life. Because I know if I don't get out of bed, her soup is going to kill me. <laughs> but, Janie, dear, I think this will be a good opportunity for you. I want to wish you lots of luck. And now I got to leave because Mrs. O'Reilly is taking me for a walk in the Bowery. The Bowery? That's a terrible place. Yes, I know, but she wants some ideas on how to redecorate my room. <laughs> Only one person in an apartment house has got the nerve to knock like that, the landlady. Come in, Mrs. O'Reilly. Hello, girls. Hello, Professor. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, maybe you could help me. I'd like to ask your advice. Uh, I've got a chance to pose as a photographer's model. Do you think I should accept it? What are you asking her for? What does she know? How dare you say that, Professor? I'll have you know I used to be a model myself in my younger days. You model? What for, the monitor or the Merrimack? <laughs> oh, go along with you. As a girl, I had a very attractive figure, and I wore me bustle at a rakish angle. <laughs> In fact, people used to mistake me for Anna Held. I see what you mean. Where Anna Held, you bulge. <laughs> Come along, Mrs. O'Reilly. Let Janie decide for herself. Well, I guess you're right, Professor. After all, Janie's got a good head on her shoulders. Uh, she's not like a... Oh, uh, goodbye, Irma. Bless you. You're a lovely girl. Irma, I've made up my mind, and I've got a hunch. I'm going to call up the magazine and check on Mr. Varell right now. Oh, good for you, Jane. Oh, Jane, if it works out well for you, then maybe you could get me a job, too. Uh, then we could model twin things like a two-way stretch. <laughs> you could stretch one way, and I could stretch the other. <laughs> Gran, you'll be in Scotland before me. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Manhattan Magazine. D do you have a Mr. Varell there? Oh, he's head of your photographic department? Y yes, I I'd like to speak with him. Thank you. Irma, he's not a phony. Not, not a... H Hello. Hello, Mr. Varell. Uh, uh, th this is Miss Stacy, the young lady you gave the card to this morning. Uh, yes, yes, I know now it's a legitimate proposition, but you can't blame a girl for being suspicious. Yes, I'd very much like to model for you. What's that? You'll come over tonight? A at my place? Oh, you have a deadline to make. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it'll be all right. Yes, at 8 o'clock. Fine. I live at 8224 West 73rd Street, Apartment 3B. See you at 8. Goodbye. Oh, Irma, he's coming here tonight to shoot the picture. He says he has a deadline. Oh, my gosh. I, I, uh, I have no idea what to wear. Oh, Jane, don't be silly. For a deadline, you'd wear black. <laughs> Thank you, Irma 
Philip Peterson. Well, now that I've decided to do it, gee, I, I've got to look my best. And Irma, please note, I don't want anything to go wrong. Understand? Oh, don't worry. Uh, Jane, uh, why don't you wear your gray pleated skirt? I'll be glad to press it for you. Uh, no thanks, honey. Well, why can't I press it for you? Because I remember how it looked the last time you pressed it. <laughs> you see, Irma, pleats are supposed to run up and down, not across. <laughs> Well, Jane, there must be something I can do. I know, I'll fix your hair. How? So it'll never grow again? <laughs> well, I, I... I could brush your suede shoes. Like you did the last time, with my hairbrush? <laughs> oh, how about... No? My... Gosh, Jane, can I even do your nails? No, honey, I, I didn't like the way you did them last time. I... I happen to be one of those persons who likes only one point on each nail. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Jane. Hi, Al. Excuse me, will you? I've got to get my things together. What are you so excited about, Jane? Don't run off. I want to tell you about my new deal. <laughs> no, thanks, Al. I do not care to hear about your deal. It can have no effect on me whatsoever. I already have the jitters. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get dressed. Jane's never interested in me or my work. Al, I'd love to hear your new deal. Ah, oh, thanks, chicken. Always can depend on you. And you won't go wrong because this one will make all our dreams come true. It's a campaign button with a picture of Truman wearing a button with a picture of Stassen, wearing a button with a picture of Wallace, wearing a button with a picture of MacArthur. So you don't have to commit yourself in front of the wrong people. You're the smartest man I know. Here's a kiss. Let's have it. <laughs> hello. Chicken, why do you always say hello when I kiss you? Well, sometimes I think it's all a dream, but when you answer me, I know you're there. <laughs> Someday I'll be there with you for life. Well, but until then, I wish there was some glamour in my life, like what happened to Jane. What happened to Jane? Well, she's going to be a photographer's model. Oh, I envy her. Oh, chicken, get that notion out of your head. I ain't marrying no career girl. I know where these things lead. First you're a model, then you win a beauty contest, then you become a chorus girl. I don't want our kids to say, Hey, Pop, give me a quarter for the show. I want to go see Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I never looked at it that way. Well, chicken, how about you and me taking a little walk, huh? Well, any other time, Al, but right now I've got to go in and help Jane. Ah, oh, she won't appreciate it. Well, Jane needs me. After all, without me, things can go wrong, and I should be there to make sure. <laughs> okay, we'll pick you up later tonight, and we'll go to a movie. Uh, Jane? Can I come in? Al is gone. Come on in, honey. Oh, I see you have all your clothes laid out on the bed. Yeah. Yeah, that's because I want to know where everything is. That includes you. Now, please don't touch anything. Oh, but you know, I want to help. Isn't there anything I can do? Like pluck your eyebrows? <laughs> no, honey. No, you did that once before, and when you were finished, everyone thought I worked for the telegraph company. <laughs> I had three dots and a dash over each eye. <laughs> Irma, sweetie, I, d I don't want anything to go wrong. I want to look my very best for the picture, so just sit in that chair over in the corner and watch. Oh, Jane. Gee, there must be some little thing I could do. I feel so useless and empty inside. <laughs> All right, honey. <laughs> All right, there is something you can do. Bring me the little table lamp in the front room, huh? I need more light. Well, thank you, Jane. Now, let's see. Um, here's a table lamp. Uh, I'll just gently pick it up. Irma! Irma, the lights went out in here. What happened? <laughs> I don't know, Jane. They went out in here, too. <laughs> you know, ladies, swan soap actually differs from other soaps. Sure, feel a cake of swan. It feels smoother. 
As Susie Swan says, it's a smoothie. It's a smoothie, it's a cake of swan. You can feel that super cream blend. You can feel the difference in it. You can tell it in a minute. It's a smoothie. That's Swan. Yes, ladies, the way Swan feels is a direct result of Swan's super creamed blend. Run your fingertips over the surface of the cake. Feel the smoothness. Then feel Swan's suds. They feel richer, creamier. And Swan's mild suds protect your hands. Sure, when you're through, look at your hands. They're left with a smooth, soft, young look. What's more, Swan Super Cream Suds rinse away so completely, your dishes don't need wiping. Yes, ma'am, Swan Soap means faster dishwashing and protection for your hands, thanks to Swan's exclusive Super Creamed Blend. Well, here I am. Manhattan Magazine's prospective glamour girl sitting in total darkness with my beloved roommate. But as dark as this room is, I don't think it begins to compare with the blackout which is Irma's mind. (laughs) She had to blow a fuse. (laughs) Just when there's no one in the entire building to help us, and just when I'm on the brink of the greatest opportunity a girl ever had. You know I should be crying? Doesn't work that way. Irma is the one that's crying. (laughs) Irma, will will you just please, please stop that whimpering? So you didn't mean to blow the fuse. All right, I forgive you. That's not why I'm crying. Then why are you crying? I'm afraid of the dark. Oh. (laughs) For goodness sakes, don't be a child. We're three floors up. Now, who could get in here? A tall, second-story man. (laughs) Jane, where are you? Near the fireplace, honey. Where are you? I think I'm in it. (laughs) It's very warm. Irma, that's the radiator. Oh, Oh, Jane, I'm scared. Oh, Honey, please stop that crying and help me get out of this spot, please. Run down to the drugstore and get a box of fuses. All right, Jane. But I can't see where the door is. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, just figure out where in the room you're standing. Oh, I can't. I'm so frightened and nervous. My hands are dripping with perspiration. Yeah. Well, stand still and I'll feel my way over to you. Irma, your hands are in the goldfish bowl. I thought I had an awful lot of fingers. No, 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 where's the door? Oh, it's so dark. Well, honey, just just walk ahead and, and turn when you get to the couch. Jane, Jane, the walls are closing in on me. Irma, you're in the closet. <laughs> Oh, honey, come on. I'll show you the door. Now, 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 get the fuses, Irma. He'll be here any minute. Uh, I'll be right back, Jane. Hiya, chicken. What's the big hurry? Hello, Al. I blew out the fuse, and Jane's trying to get dressed for the photographer, and I'm on, I'm on my way to buy a fuse. Well, ain't necessary, chicken. In an emergency like this, there's only one man to call. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. (laughs) Ah, got a problem. What do you know about electricity? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You refuse to discuss the subject? It has taken four members of your family? (laughs) Well, how, Joe? Oh, it came suddenly. They were all sitting in a chair at the time. (laughs) Understand and respect your feelings, Joe. We'll handle it myself. Gotcha. Goodbye, Joe. Chicken, know what to do. Let's go down to the master control box downstairs. We'll fix everything. Well, do you know anything about electricity? All there is to know. Follow me. You see, Chicken, if a man ain't handy around the house, he can't call himself a man. For instance, the other day, the hotel shut off my lights on a little technicality. I didn't pay the rent. (laughs) So what do I do? 
I rig up my lights to the hotel sign outside my window. Does it work? On and off, just like the sign. <laughs> well, here we are, chicken. Here's the master control box. Well, oh, but you haven't got a fuse. Don't need a fuse. Just put a penny in like this. <laughs> Al, do you notice how dark it is? Now all the lights are out. How do you like that? Force a habit. Use the slug instead of a penny. <laughs> But it's easily fixed. There must be another fuse box up in your apartment we can take care of. Oh, yes, in the kitchen closet. It's full of pipes and switches. A field day. Let's go. Gee, Al, doesn't it seem a crime? Why? We spend so much money on the tunnel of love, and now we have all this darkness for nothing, and we waste it. <laughs> uh, realize the opportunity, chicken, but uh, someone is liable to slug us in the dark. It'll be Jane with a baseball bat. <laughs> well, here we are. Jane, where are you? That's you, Al. I'm in the shower, and I haven't got a minute to waste. We'll have everything fixed immediately. Handyman, you know. All right, chicken, where's that fuse box? Uh, right over here, Al. Uh-huh. Don't even have a match, but know my way around these things. Yeah. Now, let's see. These pipes must be feeder pipes. Feel a little loose. Oh, here's a wrench. We'll tighten them up. Any results, Jane? Yeah. The water stopped running. <laughs> Not out here. My feet are getting wet. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Now I can't get the soap off me. We'll fix it in a minute. Now, let me see. There should be a loose wire around here. See if you can feel around for it, chicken. A loose wire? Oh, here's one. Oh, wait, it's stuck. I'll, I'll give it a few yanks. Here. Thanks. Eh, no results. Listen, the two of you, I'm going to catch pneumonia. I don't know what you're up to, but you call the electric company at once, do you hear? Logical suggestion, chicken. Do what she says. All right. Oh, Al. What, chicken? I think I pulled the wrong wire. <laughs> the phone doesn't work now. What are the two of you up to? The lights don't work, the water doesn't work, now the phone doesn't work. I can't even commit suicide because I'm sure the gas doesn't work either. <laughs> oh, Wormer, what'll I do? How can they take pictures of me? I'm covered with soap. I got in an old robe and my hair's a mess. Well, answer me, the two of you. Where are you? So the evening shouldn't be a total loss. Me and Chicken are sitting here on the sofa. <laughs> oh, no. If that's Mr. Varel from Manhattan Magazine, you tell him I'm sick. I have left town. Come in. Welcome. Who are you? Oh, it's me and the professor girls. My, what happened to all the lights? Irma blew the fuse, and Al helped her with the rest. <laughs> Just when I'm expecting someone. Oh, how dreadful to be stranded in the dark like this. Now, that all depends on how you view it. To me, Mrs. O'Reilly, you have never looked more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quiet, Professor. We better hurry out and find some fuses. Oh, no, it's too late. He'll be here any minute, and I'm just a mess. Well, there's no time to waste. Come on, Professor. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, it's... <laughs> Oh, it's so dark on the staircase. <laughs> Give me your hand, Professor. <laughs> Positively not. You're liable to enjoy it, and I know you. You're just the kind who will go around blowing out fuses. <laughs> Jane. Jane. What do you want? I can't see your face. Are you mad at me? No. I feel like throwing a party for you. <laughs> for you and that fugitive from an honest dollar. <laughs> that must be me. Now look here, Jane. Oh, be still, the two of you. You just ruined everything. Oh, but, but we're sorry, Jane. You're always sorry. You were sorry when you plucked all the gray hairs out of my silver fox because you thought it looked too old. <laughs> because you read that midriffs were in style. <laughs> You're always sorry. Oh, look, Jane, the lights went on. 
Al, get out of the icebox. <laughs> Jane. Jane, I have something to tell you. What? You look a mess. <laughs> no kidding. I know my hair is a mess and my face is covered with soap and I'm wearing an old bathrobe. You don't have to tell me. Oh, that's the photographer. What should I do, Jane? It doesn't matter. Tell him I'm sick. I went out of town. My grandfather died. Who is it? Mr. Burrell. I'm here to photograph Miss Stacy. Uh, Jane is dead. <laughs> she went out of town to see her sick grandfather. Now, hold it, chicken. Let the guy in. Tell him the truth. Hello. Oh, oh, Mr. Varell, I'm so sorry. You see, Hey, I... hold it, hold it. You look perfect. Perfect? Yes, perfect. How'd you think of the get-up? Get-up? Oh, I'm so glad you understand what we're after. Manhattan Magazine doesn't want fancy poses. We want realism. And I've got just the slant for the picture. Manhattan Magazine visits the average American girl on Saturday night when she starts getting dressed for her date. We'll shoot you from the tub to the trocadero. You'll be sensational. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Jane? Your picture's going to be on all the magazine stands. Yeah, soap suds and all. <laughs> well, you should be glad at least everybody will know you had a bath. <laughs> you know, it's things like that that make me want to shower my affections on the head of my friend, Irma. <laughs> Well, ladies, don't wander far from your radios right now because we have two grand pieces of news for you. First, listen. Have you heard about the exciting aluminum wear offer? It's the offer being made by Lux Flakes, Rinso, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Silver Dust, Fry, and Swan Soap. And it's wonderful. Yes, ladies, your dealer can help you get some modern, heavy-gauge aluminum wear for your kitchen. You save from 33 and a third to 50% on this offer you get a set of two 8-inch cake pans worth $1.15 for only 75 cents. Or you can get a 2-quart saucepan or a 9-inch frying pan worth $2 each for only $1 apiece. Your dealer can give you all the details. Yes. Ask your dealer about the Lever aluminum wear offer. He'll tell you how to get in on it. And now, ladies, here are the names of the grand winners in the fifth and final week of the $100,000 Lever Fur Contest. First prize, a $3,000 mink coat or the cash, goes to Mrs. Leon L. Bagley of Cornish, New Hampshire. Congratulations. The second prize winners are Grace R. Hosfeld of Lacey Park, Hatboro, Pennsylvania, Mrs. A. V. Debert of Bethesda, Maryland, Mrs. Ernest W. Blair of Tampa, Florida. You each win a beautiful $1,000 fur coat or the cash. Nice going. The other 325 winners will be notified by mail. Don't forget, ladies, ask your dealer about the Lever Aluminum Wear offer tomorrow. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our Friend Swan with My Friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Frank Bingman speaking. Sprime. Cakes are light and high. Sprime. There's a reason why. Sprime. Cakes improve with Sprime. Rely on Sprime. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's Cake Improver. For new cake-making success, try Spry, the pure all-vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 